want to go as David Alonso now joins and Ricardo Rossi has just sat Alonso up into turn one. Do you know what? That gives Mazzia free run to the line. It gives him a little bit of daylight, but look who's coming. Dennis Onchu, he will not be uh, shy and going for it. And Ayumi Sasaki has eaten up so much ground on the previous lap. He was going on the way rolling for Dennis Onchu. He's going to get a jump yep. start penalty. I'm certain of it, Michael. He was already just, you can see he was sat upright. He was relaxed, but he just tried to um, predict the lights and didn't get it correct. Keenan won't be happy with that one at all, will he? Because they've travelled all this way, hoping to see a success, but he's going to have to do it a long way now, is uh, on two. He's hit the front of this race, but he will have to do it Hello, have a penalty. Uh, he's roughing up Colin Byer there, is Jammer Mazzi. I'm not sure if that's wise or not. It's not, no, he's um, underneath the venture. Straight away, he wasn't wasting any time, but he knows he needs to, to stay in this league group right from the start, Jammer Mazzi. And now the Saki have gone up into second place. He's having his own battle in there as both Olgado and Diogo Barrera come through. That was aggressive, I thought, from Olgado. Yeah, it was. Obviously, lap one, they're all fighting for track position. There's some sparks coming up there, man. It was from the foot of Ivo Lutras, it looked like. He came through on uh, Joel Kelso, who had a really good start to the race. You see Kelso beating a sandwich there as uh, Ayumi Saki now sits back in the fourth. Josh Watley's crashed out right to the start of that one. My goodness me, that was tight from Onchu uh, in behind Sasaki. What's happened to Onchu? Oh, it's got very much about Onchu shuffled back to the field already. He's probably already got his mind. He's going to have to do him on that penalty. He will have to do it against the signal. Though. Carver Messia on this first lap is right in the middle of the melee, and he was so close, riding around the outside of Kelso, but he gets himself on the dirty part of the track. As does Romano Fernandes. Front was on the boot for Romano, but Jama Messia does nip through, and Romano keeps it on track. This is such an aggressive opening lap across the board. As now Daniel Ocaro takes over again, and here comes on to on Sasaki. One thing is very clear to me to start the weekend is the KTM double long lap uh, comes up. KTM had made clear to their riders that Ayumu Sasaki not was to be protected at all costs, but just bear it in mind. There have been about four or five really aggressive passes on him already. <laughs> you, you forget that you're talking to a lot of teenage kids and telling them to look out for someone. They obviously will as the race progresses, but right now, lap one, they're full of adrenaline and they're ready for we saw there from Sasaki in the slipstream, able to come past us. Now David Alonso joins the party wide for Barrera in turn one, and Alonso uh, comes through on him, as does Sasaki. As a big sweeper from Dennis Onchu, he takes over at the front and knows now he'll have to do a double long lap. So it's up to Dennis now to try and open a big gap on the rest. Yeah, obviously Dennis got a good draft down the front straight, make it look too slow. And noticed the turn one from Barrera, Nari went wide again. He's right at the back of the field, so another bit of a difficult first lap for him. Another Mistake. And again, Sasaki got past Olgado, this time defending because Olgado tried to come back underneath him. And Sasaki bravely hangs on. Oh, and there goes on to. And that, I think, confused Olgado a little bit because Sasaki was just taking his normal personal line. On to rejoins, and now Sasaki leads. This race still hasn't settled down. No, that was quite clever of Onchu to get to the front of the pack and then maybe uh, duck down, and he will stay. Well, he's lost a lot of track position, but he's staying with the group, so he can use the draft for a couple of laps, get back up there, and then exercise his second lap. So, uh, he's still got out of this race by a long way. As things stand, Sasaki leads the championship, uh, heading to the final round in Valencia. But Jan Amazir quickly puts a move in on David Alonso to turn that back around again, and now it's a one-point lead for the Spaniard. Oh, and that's uh, David Mignot, I don't know if it's and Perez both look together, both running each other off track. <laughs> Vincente Perez having a great weekend as a stand-in rider. He's in the mix and side to side by side with his teammate once again. Look at the big contact in the of the Dennis Onchu coming too quickly then, saying that the fact he's leading the race, he can stretch his arms up a little bit. Now he's got a lot more people to pass. Surely, when you get a long lap, at uh, this stage of a race, you want to leave it as long as possible. Yeah, you've got three laps to do it, but sometimes with motor three, having all those bikes to draft here, he can actually jump maybe two or three and get his uh, track position back as quickly as possible. So I think he'll maybe wait a couple of laps before he, he does his next long lap loop. Here we go, past this rider on circuit, Jarvan Livia, and he comes past Ayumi Sasaki on the straight. So, our uh, title hopefuls going head to head on track now, and Jabba was here from 10th on the grid, I thought he was about to lunge past Marrera, 
but fastest on the circuit, and he's up into the podium position. It's been a good start to the race for Joel Kelso. He's just in seventh at the moment, but he's the last of that first group, and then there's a bit of a gap to follow player. Track, and that is a real lunge from Ayumi Sasaki and Mazia. I thought he might have been able to squeeze through there. And Barrera had to sit up and Alonso come through it too. This is really sketchy. Oh, 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 oh. Wow. Chama Mazia has just let the break off into the side of Ayumi Sasaki there. Yeah, that was weird. Yeah, he straight lined it. It was obviously in deep and possibly a little dirty because obviously he didn't need to. He could have kept turning uh, left. He didn't need to keep the bike straight. Wow, uh, already we've got enough talking points to last us through uh, to midnight here, but we've still got another 13 and a half laps to go. And now Daniel Cardo aggressive on David Alonso. This is so sketchy at the moment, riding on the line. I think we've been dazzled by it. Here we go again, this is the move. It's not the dirty part of the race, isn't it? I think it's because he'd be worried about tipping in a little bit tight. Offline, you can see it's uh, the slightly browner part. It just worried him a little bit. He didn't want to lean in there with a the brake on. He kept the bike straight. And when you're nudging your championship rival, the stewards will take a look and they'll they may look at it slightly different to what we just did. I think I think you'll be okay. Oh, this is my good feeling initially. But all that hard work that Ayumi Sasaki's done at the start of this race and it's been undone in the space of a couple of corners there. You just keep seeing though, Michael. Every time one of the riders goes offline, gets off the little clean line, they're, they're in trouble. Yeah, yeah, we've seen it in MotoGP, difficult to make an overtake, and when you've got a, a Moto3 race and it's three bikes side by side, their line of stern going into the turn, so if you look at the dust getting kicked up when they approach the turn one, then he's on to Chucky's second one now, and he's dropped back, but he's only four seconds back, he's just in behind Asman, down in 25th across the line then, so you see him right at the back of the field on to like I said, only four seconds away. So uh, with the speed he's had this weekend and a few good drafts and aggressive overtakes as he's oh, some at the top of the shot. I think it might be Farioli. Yeah, I think it is. I think you're right. It could be the Tech 3 uh, man who was uh, rushed out. He had a long lap penalty to take himself. And I've got a feeling that it's the Italian who has rushed out in spot of the level to the Oh, my goodness me! David Mignot from downtown Doha comes through about three people into that corner, into turn six, and uh, he is now in behind Sasaki. Not what Ayubi Sasaki wants in the race getting mixed up with. Well, he's between two of the most aggressive riders. He's got David Alonso in front, and whenever you've got David Mignot behind, you know an attack's coming at any moment. I'm nervous watching this, Michael. <laughs> you know, you don't want a race to be ended uh, by an indiscretion. We want it to be fair and square on the race track, and it's just made me a little bit nervous at the start of this one. Yeah, there's been a few moves, so a little too close for comfort, but um, in motor three you can get away with a little bit of bumping because they're traveling at lesser speeds, and, and um, yeah, it's, in some instances it's safer to lift, a, lift an elbow, use a shoulder, so there's no uh, interlinking of handlebars and levers. So as things stand, the gap would be at 16 going into the final round, but we'll look at the last one. Sasaki up to fifth, fastest rider on that last lap. Who's the Antonio Ruela down in 15th? It just shows the speed throughout the field. So, yeah, you look at the front of the pack, you mentioned it earlier, Gav, it is all KTM's Gas Gas Husqvarna and the Imperial Mobility Group. They want one of their brands to win the title. They've had a word with the young riders. They are supposed to keep an eye out for a Yubi Sasaki, but what we've seen so far, the likes of Marrera, they're not uh, given any sort of crowd up to Ayumi right now. Well, Algarve, you to Algarve are the ones who are still battling for the championship in theory, you know, they, they are still mathematically viable, so I suppose in that instance it's fair enough, but some of the others, um, you just think, just, just be careful, you know, the future, you know, could lie in the hands here. There's a 
Delgado from Ortola and Mazia in third, Saki fourth. And look, I'm not trying to say, don't try and win races, it's just, just, don't be silly. Yeah, don't take out our championship hopeful. So, um, yeah, it's obviously they have to bring a bit of caution, but not much caution ever gets uh, shown. It's one good bit to turn to well. Fast up in there, but he could go oh, on. It is so, so harem, scare him out on track in this Moto3 race. Even Ortolu and Daniel Gardo trading paint. Another thing to remember as well is they're all riding for their own team, they're riding for themselves. It is an individual championship, so as I, as I say, we're not uh, suggesting anything other than you go out there and make a fair fight. Moves on the limit at the start of this race. Yeah, a long straight and a long back section where all those corners link together tends to keep a big group together as we're seeing right now it is staying that way so there will be a, a lot of jostling for position every every single time that this one's been the three abreast as they hit the brakes i don't think you're going to be able to pass someone before the line if they defend properly and that has been a, a human sasaki's achilles heel this year hasn't it defending on the last lap yeah it is slightly this Yubu's arsenal, he, he can't fight for, and he's won races in the past, but he seems to err on the side of caution thinking about the championship, but Peter Arnold did say today he needs to go and win this race, so that is the target for Yubu to uh, cross the line, bag those 25 points. He's very strong up through three and into four. Every single lap has been able to make a move in there. Jose Antonio Rueda has got a double long lap penalty uh, for knocking off Filippo Farioli on guessing. Yeah, I assume that it looked a strange one for Farioli to crash at turn three, which is a flat-out kick on a motor three bike. Obviously, he got some assistance from Jose Antonio Rueda, so a quick decision. And, a double long lap and it shows that the marshals, the stewards, are keeping a very close eye on things, and you do cross the line, you transgress. It could well be your chance high-scoring points gone. Oh, close there between Sasaki and Messina. It's a, one of those passes when you change direction into uh, turn 10, easy to, to get pushed offline. But, um, yeah, it looked like a Yubi was just sitting Jama up a little bit. goes to the inside line into the left-hander of turn 15 and reclaims second spot from Sasaki. It'll be interesting now. Let's have a look at them as Perez goes off the racetrack. Uh, David Mignoth is looking a bit tasty. There he is, right on cue on the inside of Olcaro. Let's see what the line goes straight in. So he'll pass by the line, which comes up early. You know what? There's, uh, there was the line. Yeah. But Mazia started to move, didn't he? And this is the old line they just crossed, so, uh, yeah, there was an opportunity there in the previous layout for Jamal Mazia to win the race in second out of the final turn. Oh, oh that's goodness me, Joel Kelso. He goes out into the car park. But Ayumu Sasaki and Jamal Mazia gave a chicken at the front, wasn't it? And who blinked first it was actually Mazia. And uh, Sasaki rode a very, very fine line right down to turn one and took over from Mazia now. So the gap in the championship bottom right, Just keep an eye on it, it will change constantly throughout this race, down to eight points. A much tougher prospect in that final round. The ideal thing for the neutral is Jamma Mazia is gonna, oh my goodness no, me, that's, that's the second time yeah. in this race. That's, uh, that's just, he's making that decision to park his rider, only got a shoulder there from uh, Colin Fair, stuck the elbow. That came out there as well from Mazia, wasn't it? As he went through, I'm not saying rattle, but he's making his presence felt in this race. As David Mignoth also is, he takes over at the front, but is that with Mazia right, trading a fine line, I would suggest. Yeah, he's getting aggressive. It was a proper block pass. He was hanging his rival out and trying to get more bikes in between them. But then, yeah, teammate Colin Fire saw that, thought it was dirty, and decided to put his elbow into the side of Jamal Mazia. So, yeah, down the inside, he's on the clean part of the racetrack, and he just decides not to turn in. I'm hanging him right out onto the dirty part. What's this from Colin Fire on the eight? Oh, but yeah, he stuck his elbow to the side of Jamal Mazia. Oh, now Ortona off track, Mignon off track. No track limits here because of the curves that we have, very high, and um, really do. Uh, cause a penalty if you go high up on them. Oh, I'm, do you know what? This is making me so nervous watching this one. Yeah, Gio de Marrera through the penultimate corner and down he goes and 
out of the race. Was he helped or was he pushed or was it just a simple crash? Yeah, he didn't have to see what caused it. Perhaps he got some assistance there, maybe a, a clip of the handlebar on the exit of 15. This thing's done in the championship. 15 points, but instantly changes the game. So, Andrade will take over, remember, third and fourth in the championship. This will not be easy viewing for Alonso and Mignot, the pair of them there, trading a bit of paint, but not for anyone back in the garage. No. They're having kittens. You can imagine Peter Ernle in the Husqvarna garage, you can imagine me and Brad Couture in the Lampard garage, they will be so nervous, biting the fingernails right now. We're not even at half distance in the race, and there must be a hundred overtakes already at the front of this pack. So yeah, it's going to go all the way to the line. Heart in mouth stuff under the floodlights here in Qatar. Down to turn six once more we go. Just a word on Denis Ochi's progress. He is still in this. He's only 1.9 seconds behind. So despite the double long lap penalty for a jump start, he's back in it. This was not lost the it was all Tola, yeah. wasn't it, on the inside of Diogo Moreira? I thought it might be turn 15 on a motor three bike once you're halfway around the turn, it should be quite safe. So, unfortunate touch of the shoulder at Lee Nigel. Is he going to that team next year? Uh, Tola. Yeah, he's moving to. He's taking Moreira's ride at MTL, yeah. isn't it? He's moving across. Ah, and we have on uh, Jama Mazia's dashboard a warning. He's been given a warning for his conduct. So. Jamal Mazir is just going to have the ball. Look at the top of the picture here now. Down towards the final corner. You see Fernandez on that dirty line, and he's just going to park it in the middle of the corner. Yeah, it's obviously it's racing, but for me that's a, a little bit over the line. Been a, there's been more than one of those in this race. We've had penalties, haven't we? Already for even Otola, Jose Antonio Rueda. But when it's the championship that people are battling for here, it just feels, I don't know, just feels lovely wrong. Look, let's not take anything away from Jaron Mazzini. He is holding up his end of the bargain. He's put it all. There's a big, big yeah. battle going up for second there with Ricardo Rossi now. Actually, it ended up OK, but Holgado did get knocked back to fifth there. There was, I thought he was going to actually take him down with the entry speed that they were coming into turn 14 side by side. Right, Jaron Mazzini is trying to just run defensive into the last corner, and Dennis Onchi is starting to look. He's up into fourth place. But one lap to go for Jaume Mazia. If it stays like this, he is going to be the world champion in Moto3, and he's got the hammer down at just the right time. He's not giving them a chance. There's nerves down in the Lampard garage. Ayubi Sasaki's just put the fastest lap of the race in on that last lap. One to go as David Alonso now joins, and Ricardo Rossi has just sat Alonso up into turn one. Do you know what? That gives Mazia free run to the line. It gives him a little bit of daylight, but look who's coming. Dennis Onchu, he will not be uh, shy of it going for it. And Ayumi Sasaki has eaten up so much ground on the previous lap. He was six tenths quicker than Mazia on that previous lap. It cannot be, surely. This will be a lap of his lifetime, yeah. If he's able to claw it back as Alonso now goes up into third place. The Leopard team are waiting. They're ready to jump in the air for joy if Xiaomi Mazia can bring this home in the lead. And David Alonso now attacks Denis Onchi for second place. They all want their taste of glory today. What a lap from Ayubi Sasaki. Fair play to Prince the Gap. He's already back onto Danny Holgado's rear wheel. He's got to ride the last half lap of his life just to keep this championship alive for one more week. And there's been a couple of times in this race he's already tried to do this and not been able to get away. But look at what Mazzia, he's kept something in his back pocket. And there's not long to go now. But for Mazzia, as he uh, heads round into turn 10. This is where we've seen Sasaki look strong all race. He's surely going to be able to get through, is he, on Danny Olgado. He's done it all race. And he does it again, I'm sure, if you go in. Yeah, he had to, he had to do it. And so he's thrown into fifth place now. Fifth would not be enough, though, with Mazia leading. But look at Alonso. Oh, look at Onchu. Oh, it's a sack. He's almost down. He's almost down. He's done. And actually, he's sat up. He's sat up. So it's a sacky fifth at very best. He just needs help now. He needs help from people in front of him. I'm not sure it's going to happen. Sharma Mazia has ridden absolutely superbly under the floodlights here in Qatar. He's going to round the final corner. David Alonso will not get him to the line, and Xiaomi Mazia is going to be crowned Moto3 World Champion here under the lights in Canada.